good afternoon. Today I'm doing a retake of my last video about brass tuning because despite the video being perfect in every way, shape and form, I actually had a couple of mistakes in there so I'm wanting to redo that today. And so in today's video we are going to be going down a little bit of a technical rabbit warren to discuss the tunefulness of brass instruments because brass instruments are not naturally very tuneful and I think it's important for all brass players to understand why that is. And so there are two things that we're going to be talking about today. The first is the harmonic series and the second is our valves. The harmonic series is the fundamental building block of all brass instruments and it is one of the things that differentiate them from other types of instruments. And it is, for anyone who needs a brief recap, the series of notes that we can play without having to adjust our fingers. So the series of notes that we can play uh, just by adjusting our lip. And so if I pick up this flugelhorn here, the harmonic series starts in the pedal range, okay, right down very low. And it starts with an instrument that on uh, an instrument like this we will call a C. It's actually a concert B flat, but these read in treble clef. And so uh, on a B flat corner, flugelhorn or a trumpet, we're going to call this a C. And it sounds like this. <laughs> That, in, that note there is called our fundamental pitch. It is the actual inherent pitch of this instrument, even though it is sort of a lot lower than what the notes would or, or, uh, ordinarily use. That note is also called our first harmonic. From that point we go up to our second harmonic, which is what we would call our normal bottom C. And then we've got our third harmonic, our fourth harmonic. And it goes up higher and higher and higher. The only thing that limits the size of the harmonic series is how high you can play. Now the principle that underpins the harmonic series is that each pitch in that harmonic series is a multiple of the frequency of the fundamental tone. So let me simplify that for a minute. Let's say we're playing an instrument where the fundamental tone is 100 hertz. So the first harmonic is one times our fundamental pitch. So one times 100, 100 hertz. Our second harmonic is two times our fundamental. So two times 100 is 200 hertz. And it continues in multiples like that. 100, 200, 300, 400, all the way across. So our 14th harmonic is going to be 14 times our fundamental pitch, or 1400 hertz. So what makes this concept quite interesting is that the frequency of our harmonics increase in a linear manner. So if we draw this on a graph down below, we've got our frequency down the side and we've got the intervals in the harmonic series and it is a straight line. The intervals increase by 100 hertz each time. Whereas the pitches that we have say on a piano keyboard or that we use in, in the scales do not progress in a linear fashion. They increase in an exponential fashion, which means the graph goes up like that, as we'll see down here uh, below. And so with, an exponent, with the exponential growth of frequency that we have with uh, a scale, the, what happens is that the frequency doubles every octave. So if the base note of our scale, uh, whatever point of reference was that 100 hertz, one octave higher would be 200 hertz, another octave higher would be 400 hertz, and then 800 and 1600 and so forth. So if we go back to our instrument with a 100 hertz fundamental and compare harmonic intervals with octaves, the first octave is 100 and 200 hertz. That is identical to the first harmonic and the second harmonic. There is an octave difference between the two. However, in the next octave, our 200 to 400 hertz octave, we find a harmonic exists right slap bang in the middle at 300 hertz. The next octave up, 400 to 800 hertz, we've now got three harmonics that appear in equal distances between those uh, the, the octaves, the 400 and the 800. So we've got our 500, 600 and 700 hertz harmonics. If we go up another octave between 800 hertz and 1600 hertz, we've now got seven harmonic intervals that appear between the octave. 
So if we were to now take that in a real life situation and we take again our B flat flugelhorn or B flat cornet or B flat uh, high horn or B flat trumpet, the fundamental tone or the first harmonic of that instrument is 116.54 hertz and we'd again call that our pedal C. It's actually a concert B flat but we, those instruments don't read in concert pitch. And so the next octave higher, our bottom C, our second harmonic, is going to be double that frequency. And every additional harmonic is simply in another multiple of that fundamental 116.54 hertz. The problem that we've got with this arrangement is where we've got those intervals that fall between the octaves. They do not line up perfectly with the notes on our scale. So if we play our second, third and fourth harmonics, which when we're playing these instruments we'd refer to as C, G and C, that G in the middle is our problem because the 349.62 Hz or three times our fundamental pitch does not correspond to the equivalent note in the scale. It is a little bit sharp. Now in the next octave we've got three intervals that fall between those octaves. So we've got our fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh and eighth intervals in the harmonic series. Our fourth and eighth are octaves uh, and our fifth, sixth and seventh fit in between the middle there. None of those three notes in the middle, the E, the G and the B flat, match perfectly with the equivalent notes on the scale. The E is a medium amount flat, the G is a little bit sharp and that high B flat is very, very flat. And so that is the nuts and bolts of the first thing that I want to talk about today. Even if our instrument's tuning note is perfectly in tune, even if our C or concert B flat is perfectly in tune, any of those intervals that fall between the octaves of our fundamental are not going to be in tune. And the amount that they are out of tune changes depending on which note we are playing. So that's the first thing that I want to talk about with regards to the tunefulness of brass instruments. The second thing I want to talk about is our valves. Our valves are naturally imperfect. To illustrate the problem with our valves, I'm going to use uh, some graphical representations. And to do this, I'm going to use this guitar fretboard on the bottom of the screen. On the guitar fretboard, we have a number of vertical lines. These are called frets. And each fret is exactly one semitone or a half step uh, from its neighbor. Now when we go down lower on the scale, the frets get further and further apart. And when we go higher up on the fretboard, the frets get closer together. And so even though the physical difference, the physical distance rather, between the frets changes length depending on how low or high you're playing, they are still perfectly one semitone difference between each one. What we're going to do is draw a line down the middle of this guitar fretboard and we're going to call this our harmonic. Okay, this is any interval in the harmonic series, it doesn't matter which, this is it. So let's just say it's a C or a concert B flat, it's an open note. Our first valve is designed to accurately lower the pitch of our instrument by two semitones. One full step. So I'll draw what the first valve does in, on the fretboard down here. Our second valve lowers the pitch by one semitone, a half step, and I'll draw that down below. And the third valve lowers the pitch by three semitones, a step and a half. Some brass instruments will be lucky enough to have a fourth valve, and the fourth valve lowers the pitch by two and a half steps, as you can see down here. Now these valves are all designed to be in tune when they are being used one at a time. We have some problems, however, when we go to use these valves in combination, because the distance between semitones on the fretboard gets wider apart the lower in pitch we go, whereas our valves actually stay the same length. 
So if we were to uh, illustrate this, if we were uh, added the first and second valves together like this, we notice that we don't actually reach that third fret down from our harmonic. We're a little bit sharp. Whereas if we compare this to just using our third valve, uh, our third valve, because it's designed exactly to be a tone and a half, if it's perfectly tuned, it does reach that third fret. So first and second together should be a little bit sharper than using just your third valve. And so let's illustrate the first and third valves being used in combination together and we'll draw that down below. If we compare that to using just the fourth valve we can also see that it is now quite sharp. Now the worst co possible valve combination on a three valve instrument is if we try to use them all at once. So we've got first, second and third. We can now see by drawing that on this fretboard that it is very very sharp. In fact it's over half a semitone sharp. The alternative to first, second and third is to use fourth and second if you have a fourth valve but even that is just a little bit sharp but a lot more manageable than first, second and third. And so that is in a nutshell the other problem that we've got with brass instruments. Using multiple valves together is going to produce results that are not necessarily perfectly in tune. So there have been a number of attempts to tr uh, from manufacturers over the years to try and solve the second problem, the issue with valves being uh, untuneful when we use them in combination. Uh, there have been some manufacturers who've decided that instead of having three or four valves, we're going to have seven valves. One that lowers the pitch a semitone, one that lowers the pitch two semitones, and three semitones, and four semitones, etc, etc. Uh, that's quite unusual, but it's been done. The uh, is a very common system that's still in use today called a compensating valve system. I've done a video on that on, in the past so please feel free to click up here if you would like to be whisked away to that video to hear all the stuff I've got to say about compensating valves. Another different approach to solving this tunefulness problem is something that I think Besson came up with that they called their enharmonic system. Now this was a very interesting and quite a novel way of dealing with this situation even though it was developed over a hundred years ago and it's not made anymore. It is something I would absolutely love if I had one of these enharmonic instruments to show and demonstrate to you but they're very uncommon, they're very expensive and even though they're very ingenious they only solve the second of these problems that I've talked about. So hopefully today this video has given you an understanding of these two aspects of brass tunefulness. If you've got any questions or comments please feel free to ask them down in the comments below. Thank you for watching.